good morning again. I have selected a writing by the Venerable Lama Gyendun Rinpoche. They sometimes, Buddhists have such a way of putting in such beautiful, simple words, such deep truth. Happiness cannot be found through great effort and willpower, but is already there in relaxation and letting go. Don't strain yourself. There is nothing to do. Whatever arises in the mind has no importance at all because it has no reality whatsoever. Don't become attached to it. Don't pass judgment. Let the game happen on its own, springing up and falling back without changing anything. And all will vanish and reappear without end. Only our searching for happiness prevents us from seeing it. It is like a rainbow which you can run after without ever catching it. Although it does not exist, it has always been there and accompanies you every instant. Don't believe in the reality of good and bad experiences. They are like rainbows. Waiting to grasp the ungraspable, you exhaust yourself in vain. As soon as you relax this grasping, space is there. Open, inviting, and comfortable. So make use of it. All is yours already. Don't search any further. Don't go into the inextricable jungle looking for the elephant who is already quietly at home. Nothing to do, nothing to force, nothing to want, and everything happens by itself. There is a Chinese saying that can be sometimes used as a greeting and that goes like, may you live in interesting times. And when you hear that, you go for a moment, is that a nice thing or a not so nice thing? <laughs> interesting times. Well, it all depends on our perspective, how we receive that. For some people, they thrive on interesting times, yes? And others like, oh no, please, no, no, I like my life to be very structured and organized. And by the way, we're coming up, of course, on the year of the fire monkey, so uh, it's going to be interesting. A friend of mine put it like this, we're going to swing from vine to divine. <laughs> so. That being said, the topic today is perspective. And because that by itself is already a pretty big topic, once I add the aspects of what is the nature of reality to it, whoa, it gets even heavier. So we're going to look at a lot of different aspects of how perspective creates our world. So I'm never good just behind that, but I can pick this up if you like. So let's look a little bit at our current world. Of course, there's always things happening, right? I mean, God knows what the stock market is up to next. <laughs> and what's all gonna happen on the political realms. And again, what's your perspective? You know, there is a certain candidate that some people think he's going to really pull our country out of um, some trouble and others think, oh no, don't think so. <laughs> We're not going into politics, but it is really opinion, perspective, point of view, angle. And it is not just that 
intellectually. No, it is also an aspect of co-creation. Because you all know that our beliefs shape our reality, yes? We've all seen the people who expect the worst and guess what? They seem to attract events that cement this belief, yes? And then we've seen the optimist that just unshakable walks through the world with a, an expectation and a deep sense of all is well. Life is good, people are friendly, and they have amazing things happen to them. You know, my sort of an archetypal energy to that is, is uh, Forrest Gump. You all remember that old movie? Look at what kind of things he co-created in his life. And he certainly was uh, sort of a simple mind, but that showed the power of the heart and of the beliefs to manifest. As we, when we look at the world, you know, in, in America, we're not that exposed to it, but you probably are aware of the whole refugee crisis in Europe, right? So I watch the German news every evening and I really get sort of pulled into the controversy, you know? There's, there's the open hearts of the people who want to help and make these persecuted uh, refugees welcome. And then there is the other part of the population who said, oh, they're gonna take what I have and we don't want them here. And you know, it's so interesting when we just look at numbers. Well, Germany has only about 70 million people. Last year alone, in 2015, over 1 million people came in. Just numbers. But remember when that one picture went around the world of a child that had washed up on the shore of a Greek island. And all of a sudden, I'm getting my shoes. It was not numbers anymore. It was a child. How can this, this is, like this could be my child under different circumstances. How can we let this happen? So all of a sudden, our perspective really shifted, yes? And so, you know, we often are not aware of how much we are co-creators through our beliefs. Remember when Neil Armstrong, I think he was really the first uh, person in space, and when there's a famous quote by him, when he, he says, when I saw the earth, this little blue pea, and I could put my thumb there and it, it would be smaller than my thumb. <laughs> Talking about perspective, yes? So a totally new view of the world opened up. And of course, at the same time, the awe of what this beautiful planet contains was so tangible in this experience. See, we are, of course, limited by our senses. We all know that. Our eyes perceive a certain spectrum and the, the visible light is really, to, to what our eyes is visible, is just a tiny fragment of all the rays. We don't see cosmic rays or X-rays, but that doesn't make them any less real. Of course, as spiritualists, we are also gifted with or we and polish and cherish and develop our gifts of inner sight, intuition, hearing the words of spirit. So we know that our world isn't what it appears to be. But not everyone out in the world has access to these many dimensions of reality. I think we just sometimes reach into this giant pool of the unmanifest 
that from where everything is possible and we pull out that sliver of reality that corresponds to our innermost beliefs. No problem with that. The only trouble is we think that's the truth and the only truth. And that's where so much conflict and strife in the world arises that we somehow feel what I perceive is the reality. And you know, we have things that we agree on that, you know, we call this a chair in English language and, uh, you know, even in other languages, we would say, yep, this is a thing that allows me to sit. So there's agreement, yes? So the reality that we have agreed on is defined by the function of this chair. It's similar with money. You know, money is just an agreement between people. It has no inherent value. <laughs> it's, it's a piece of paper, but it's by agreement that it has its value. In the old days, you know, they, before money was uh, invented, I should say, you know, it used to be coffee beans or shells or then it became gold coins. Well, there was still, you know, at least some exchange value. But anyway, so reality is constantly changing, flowing. And when we align ourselves with that flow and don't pretend that we alone know the truth, the only reality, then when we can coexist, yes? We can leave room for other beliefs. We don't feel threatened by, by people coming, flooding our countries or having different religious beliefs. There is room as long as they abide by the laws of our country. So there are some conditions, of course. But, um, you know, even in the smaller realms of family, I bet you all know people that maybe grew up as siblings in the same family. And you ask one sibling what their experience was on how they grew up. And they say, oh my God, I had the most loving parents, happy childhood. And then you ask another sibling and they say, oh, it was the pits. <laughs> my mother never loved me and she always preferred someone else over me. Same family, same growing up, and yet such a different reality based on point of view, perspective, experience of that reality. We've all heard, of course, the, the famous thing of the glass half full, half empty, and we know that that's associated with the optimist and the pessimist, right? But you may not know that there are other points of view about that. And I'm looking for that right now because this is really funny. So, here. What does a fatalist think about that famous glass? He says, the water will evaporate. The feminist, all glasses are equal. The realist, glass is half drunk, half drunk. Engineer, <laughs> glass ain't big enough. Narcissist, look at me in the glass. <laughs> Evangelist, the glass must repent. Capitalist, sell the glass. <laughs> Anarchist, break the glass, of course. Psychologist, how does the glass feel about the water? <laughs> <laughs> Communist, this glass is for everyone in equal measure. And finally, the nihilist, the glass does not exist and neither do I. 
So here you have it, just a few perspectives on a simple container that is filled to the midpoint with water. Isn't it interesting to just, of course, in a humorous way, look at how many ways there are to interpret the world. You know, uh, they've done some interesting studies in in England at the subway stations. They have actually installed clocks that count backwards. What's that called? Um, countdown. Countdown. Thank you. So when people wait for the next subway train, as long as they have a countdown clock, they perceive a seven minute delay as shorter than a four minute delay without a countdown. Reality? Because they have a sense of you know, we're all control freaks, aren't we? On some level, we are. So when people have a sense of, ah, okay, I know what's gonna happen, then that time frame shrinks. Other example, uh, who, who has, well, I won't ask, but I have had to take antibiotics in my life. And it's usually, you know, what, 24 days or whatever. And there's like 24 white pills, right? So they have found that when they just make eight of those pills blue and the rest they keep white, people will have a better chance to finish the course of antibiotics. Why? Because there is a break point. There is a sense of, ah, now I have only one more blue and oh, I'm, 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 I'm on one third through. You know, they, it's real. So, uh, and our reality is probably more colored by, mm, let's call it some manipulation of some kind, i.e. media. <laughs> you know, is it the truth? Well, you know, there are so many versions of truth. So it, how we experience the world is colored by how we have experienced things before. And then it becomes sort of a loop. Yes, <laughs> unless we change, unless we shift, unless we make a conscious decision and choice to do things differently, to perceive things differently. We are stuck in that loop. But we have the power of choice. This is, you know, Earth is one of the few places, we are told, that is of free will. Meaning that, well, we don't have control over everything that happens to us, but what we, how we feel about it, how we interpret our point of view, angle, perspective, that makes all the difference. You know, just talk to a person who um, may have had cancer and you know, how differently people experience that. And uh, some say, well, it was the greatest blessing because it made me really look at what I had valued in my life and it allowed me to shift my priorities. And so it became a gift, yes? So I invite you to allow for the possibility that things are never what they seem to be. And I want to read you a quick story about that that beautifully illustrates that point. It's the story of two traveling angels. You may have heard it, it's a classic, but it so well illustrates the point. Two traveling angels stopped to spend the night in the home of a wealthy family. The family was rude and refused to let the angels stay in the mansion's guest room. Instead, the angels were given a small space in the cold basement. As they made their bed on the hard floor, the older angel saw a hole in the wall and repaired it. When the younger angel asked why, 
The older angel replied, things aren't always what they seem. The next day, the next night, the pair came to rest at the house of a very poor, but very hospital farmer and his wife. After sharing what little food they had, the couple let the angels sleep in their bed where they could have a good night's rest. When the sun came up the next morning, the angels found the farmer and his wife in tears. Their only cow, whose milk had been their sole income, lay dead in the field. The younger angel was infuriated and asked the older angel, how could you have let this happen? The first man had everything, yet you helped him, she accused. The second family had little but was willing to share everything, and you let the cow die? Things aren't always what they seem, the older angel replied. When we stayed in the basement of the mansion, I noticed there was gold stored in that hole in the wall. Since the owner was so obsessed with greed and unwilling to share his good fortune, I sealed the wall so he wouldn't find it. Then last night, as we slept in the farmer's bed, the angel of death came for his wife. I gave him the cow instead. Things aren't always what they seem. So, next time you see a bum on the street and all kinds of judgment come up in your heart about this person, can you shift your perspective and just allow for the possibility that there's a beautiful soul in that worn out body and that you don't know what their reality is, what they had to face, that maybe they're in the grip of a, an addiction and living in hell. But it is your power to send a blessing, to see the Christ even in this person. And that's how we co-create a better world. Even the jerk that just cut you off the freeway, you know, yes, I get angry too. <laughs> I'm not a patient driver. But maybe, just maybe, this is a single parent who is just dashing to be home with his kids, help with homework, cook dinner, and whatnot. So we don't know, but we can allow, we can shift our perspective so that there is greater harmony because what we send out is what we all create. Fear creates more fear. Goodwill, kindness, allowing, inviting, sending out love even when we don't know whether that person is deemed worthy of our love or not. It creates an energy field and that combined energy is what we as, as having awareness are invited to co-create. If this new earth is going to come about, it's up to each and every one of us and to the best of our abilities to, you know, we can have that first reaction. Oh, jerk. And then take a deep breath and say, hmm, well, I just hope that you're gonna come home safe and don't endanger anyone else. We can shift, we can create goodwill and harmony. And you know what? In the end, it blesses you too, because when we have so much anger and criticism and resentment in our bodies, it ain't good. <laughs> so sing a happy song to yourselves and claim your birthright to be a co-creator for good. And just remember, it's all a matter of perspective and things aren't always what they seem. But you can, with great creator, own the right to do the best you can to shine the light and so to participate 
in bringing forth a new world.